Now, the court has been hearing how local people turned on seven Muslim men accused of using threatening words and behaviour during a soldier's homecoming parade in Luton. The defendants are accused of telling the Royal Anglian soldiers to burn in hell and branding them murderers, prompting an angry response from counter-demonstrators. But the men's lawyers say they should never have been brought to court. Kate Brout has our report. It's the third day that these seven men have appeared at Luton Magistrates Court and the second they've appeared on big screens inside the courtroom as footage of their protests was shown to the district judge. They were shown waving placards and chanting baby killers, murderers and British soldiers you will pay as members of the 2nd Battalion of the Royal Anglian Regiment back from Iraq marched through Luton Town Centre on Tuesday, March the 10th last year. They were later arrested under Section 5 of the Public Order Act, but the demonstration clearly angered a much larger crowd. In court today, we saw police video footage of the entire protest, including a so-called hostile protest. Quite a large group of men and women, both young and old, trying to break through the police cordon around the Muslim protest. And they could be heard shouting obscenities in front of the camera, like, go back to your own country and scum. And then they broke into football chants. Now, there was some discussion in court today about whether any of these were members of the BNP or National Front Party and whether the police were aware of their presence there. Three people were arrested following that hostile protest. Two are awaiting trial. Lawyers for Jubair Ahmed, Sajdar Chowdhury, Jalal Ahmed, Zaya Rahman, Munim Abdul, Yusuf Bashir and Ibrahim Anderson say they had been completely open with police beforehand about the protest. A judge must decide if they were exercising freedom of speech or being abusive and threatening. Kate Prout, Anglia News, Luton. Well, next tonight, you may have seen our colleagues on the ITV National News reporting this week on how the behaviour of just a few individuals can make the lives of their neighbours an absolute misery. But it's not just a problem in the big inner cities. Even here in our region, some families live in fear of unruly neighbours. Well, Neil Bradford has been speaking to one Northampton couple who've endured 10 months of bad behaviour and harassment, but because they tackled it in exactly the right way, managed to solve the problem. For almost a year, Paul and Carol Mitchell were prisoners in their own home. There was simply no escape from their neighbours from hell. Noise, um, bad language, um, no respect for our property. There was a lot of intimidation, you know, shouted at and sworn at, and, you know, sort of go, you know, go die, that sort of business. After trying to reason with them without success, the Mitchells involved the police, a move which only increased the level of threat. And they threatened to firebomb you as well? That's right, yes. Um, we screwed down our letterbox, um, so obviously nothing could be put through there. We had a fire alarm installed, and we've also got the fire extinguisher, so we were prepared. <laughs> There were daily incidents, regular shouting and screaming, even late night ball games. But Fridays were always worst. That was definitely party night. They would turn up, I don't know, four or five o'clock, um, perhaps earlier, all their bags of uh, beer and vodka. And then they would just party and the noise would get louder and louder. It would spill outside. They would fight. There was no escape. You couldn't go out and talk to them because they were too, too drunk. You couldn't reason with them while they were in their gang. Unable to sleep, Paul and Carol were finding it hard to cope. Their antisocial neighbours were ruining their lives. That was the big thing, sleep deprivation. I mean, it, it started sort of mid-afternoon, probably early at lunchtime, and went through to five in the morning. At first, the couple found it hard to get help, but they were determined not to be beaten. Their meticulous diary and CCTV recordings helped police realise the seriousness of their situation and take the necessary action. Within ten months, their neighbours from hell were evicted. Well, the actual police officer who dealt with the case said it wouldn't have really been dealt with, you know, the way it was, if with, without all this information, because we logged, ev well, Carol logged every um, incident number, and um, without the DVD, I mean, it's hearsay, really, isn't it? Without evidence, we weren't going to let them win. We were determined 
that we weren't going to hide, um, and we didn't. Paul and Carol can now enjoy the quieter life they deserve. They realise many others aren't so lucky. Neil Bradford, Anglia News, Northampton. Well, congratulations to Paul and Carol, but what a dreadful time for them. And uh, tomorrow night, we'll be hearing from two women who helped to clean up their neighbourhood from crime and antisocial behaviour by patrolling the streets despite threats and intimidation, which continues, I'm afraid, to this very day. Well, it's uh, 15 minutes past six. You're watching Anglia tonight. Still to come, of course, we've got that full weather forecast. Pl Now more news from your part of the region and the South End MP David Amos is making a fresh appeal to the government for cash to spruce up the resort's famous pier and seafront. He says he wants restoration work completed by 2012 so that South End can become one of the landmark towns in time for the London Olympics. Martin Stew has our report. Looking at the windswept empty promenade of South End, it's hard to believe the town was once the jewel on Essex's coastline. The focal point then was the pier, the world's longest at 1.33 miles. It was ravaged by fire in 2005. It's never recovered fully from that fire. Now David Amos, the local MP, wants the government to put money forward to restore it to its former glory in time for the 2012 Olympics. When you ask most people what they associate with South End, it would be the pier. And I'm very, very keen that the pier figures in the opening and closing ceremonies of the Olympic Games in 2012. And for that to happen, we need help, and we need help now from the government. Leanne Elliott runs one of the local cafe and gift shops. Each summer you see how the tourists are declining and going elsewhere because it's getting less and less busy. I don't think there's particularly anything wrong with it. I just think it's just been the same for years and years now. It needs something to liven it up. David Amos also wants investment on the cliffs and seafront before it's too late. It had a heyday in the 80s. After that, it went downhill for a bit and then it sort of turned to a ghost town. It has become a ghost town because, like I say, this used to be a right thriving seafront, you know what I mean? But now... Because there's hardly any traction on the seafront. Yeah, it needs a bit of tidying up a bit, sort of like more lights, attractions for the summer people. The hope is to regenerate in time for the London Olympics to give the town's tourism trade a sporting chance. Martin Stew, Anglia News, South End. South End, hopefully on the way back there. Now, police in Suffolk are renewing their appeal for information about a young man whose body was discovered in Southwold last year. Daniel Hannon was last seen alive on the 28th of February. His body was found three days later. Police are keen to trace two young women who Daniel is believed to have spoken to in the Station Road area of Southwold on the night he disappeared. A 68-year-old man has died in a house fire in Chelmsford, which broke out in the early hours of this morning. Crews reported that the semi-detached property in Pines Road was well alight. When they arrived at the scene, the man's body was found in the front lounge by firefighters wearing breathing apparatus. A new shop's been opened in Norwich by the city's Green Party to make it more accessible to the public. The Green Shop on the corner of Dove Street and Pottergate was opened this morning by Adrian Ramsey, the party's parliamentary candidate for Norwich South. The Greens say it'll be a place for local people to learn more about their policies. Well, we're the first party opening a shop in the heart of Norwich today because we want people to come in to tell us about their concerns, the issues that we should be campaigning on, and to find out about our policies and the issues that we're already working on here in Norwich. So we look forward to seeing lots of members of the public coming in to visit us.